So today we're going to be taking the 2006 RMZ 450 engine and to putting it all back together. In the last video, we tore it down. Uh, if you guys remember, we took the wrist pin out of it here. Uh, you can see there's a weld mark on it. Uh, basically, the wrist pin seized to the connecting rod. So I think the engine just pretty much ran out of oil and they seized together and uh, tore down into the bottom end and everything else besides the crankshaft and the piston pin here and the piston look to be in pretty good condition. So I went ahead and ordered up everything we're gonna need to put this engine back together today and hopefully get it running. So when I rebuild this engine today, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over some of the specific intricacies of this engine. Uh, maybe not everything you need to know about rebuilding an engine. I'm probably gonna have to time lapse a lot of it just cause it's a long process. So coming soon on the channel, I do have a really detailed series on four stroke engines that I'm gonna be documenting. Uh, it's just gonna go from the tear down all the way to the assembly, everything you need to know. So if you guys wanna learn how to rebuild four stroke engines, go down below, hit the subscribe button, and also hit that bell while you're down there so you know when I'm posting about that. All right guys, well that is definitely enough talking for today. Let's go rebuild this engine and check out the products I went ahead and ordered. All right guys, so if you didn't watch the last video, here is the engine cases off of this 2006 RMZ 450 that we had all tore down. Um, as you can see, uh, I left the bearings in the engine just because I wasn't sure what bearings are going to come with this kit. But I just got the kit in and it's just going to be the main bearings here. All right, and you can see here on the table, I have all the parts that we tore off in the last video. We're going to be putting most of these back on the engine. And if you guys watched the last video, you'll know I went ahead and ordered a Wiseco bottom end rebuild kit. I went with this one just because it was cheaper than any of the other options. Uh, it's a little different than the hot rods kit, which I used on the CR125. It's going to come with less stuff. Uh, you can see here we have all the seals for the bottom end. And then this kit's also going to come with a brand new crankshaft here from Wiseco. Uh, so the reason why I went with this as opposed to just getting a rod and the bearings is because uh, basically this kit worked out to be cheaper because it comes with all the OEM seals. Uh, if I went ahead and ordered the OEM seals separately, then it would all add up to be more expensive. And you can see it also comes with a set of main bearings. Okay guys, so I'm going to start off by removing these two set screws here for the crank bearing on this engine. Uh, you can either use an impact screwdriver like this, or you guys can use an impact driver like this. This is what I prefer to use, I just have more feel and these bits seem to sink deeper into the set screw here. So this is what I prefer to go with. Sometimes there will be Loctite on these, so make sure to give them some heat if you're having an issue. Looks like these actually had a little bit of blue Loctite on them. Okay, and as you can see, with just a little heat and a hammer and a socket, we were able to get this old main bearing out of here. It actually still spins pretty good, doesn't have play, uh, but I just wanted to replace it since the kit came with a new one and just make sure this bike runs really good for the next owner. If any of you guys happen to be rebuilding this engine on the crank bearing, this line right here is going to face inwards. They're going to face in towards each other and towards the crankshaft.
Another thing you might notice if you're doing an engine like this is the two open ends of the seal usually face towards the crankshaft like this. Um, in this case, they actually are going to face towards the outside of the engine, so the open side is going to face this way. I've seen a few other Suzuki's do this as well. Another thing you guys might notice if you're working on a Suzuki engine is they use a gear style shifting. So as long as you line these gear teeth up in the middle like I have here, uh, you should be fine with that. Uh, all you're going to do is just when you uh, push the foot lever, you're going up or down. And that'll move this linkage and allow you to change gears.
Hey guys, well we're now pretty much back to where we started. We have the bottom end all back together and everything seemed to go pretty smoothly. So now we're going to throw the top end on here to do this. Uh, I got a Tush top end gasket kit as well as a Pro X piston kit. And as you guys go to install your camshafts, this is a point in time when you really want to make sure you're looking in your service manual and make sure you're installing your camshafts correctly at top dead center. Uh, even just a couple notches off and you can get your valves hitting each other or the piston. So you definitely want to be careful here because you can severely damage the engine. I'll be going into depth in this when I go ahead and rebuild the engine on this channel. Alright guys, it feels really good to have this engine back together, uh, it took a lot of work to get it back together, but as you can see, it is still pretty dirty, and before I put it in the bike, I'm just going to give it a real quick clean up here and make sure all this aluminum is cleaned off. Alright, and then we don't want any water getting in this engine obviously, so I'm going to use a set of powder coating plugs to plug the coolant inlet and outlet, and our crankcase breather, as well as the... Uh, uh, intake and exhaust here. I'm just going to use a rag to plug those. Alright, and since I ran out of mag wheel cleaner, I'm going to be using a couple products that I got from my local auto parts store. And then to finish it off, I have some Mother's Aluminum Polish. This stuff works great. Um, I'm not actually going to polish it, I'm just going to use it to clean off the aluminum, and it does a really good job of that. Okay guys, well we accomplished pretty much everything we could in this video. It feels really good to have this engine all back together and ready to hopefully run in the next video. So guys, stay tuned for that. We'll get back into the nitty gritty details of how to flip a dirt bike.